Hello, everybody, and welcome to our first live stream CE5 to, as a group together, make contact with UFOs and extraterrestrials. We are live streaming the night sky, so I'll be talking to you like this, and then we've got John Martin here, a good friend of mine who I met through uh, TikTok, actually, um, and so he's streaming the night sky in Georgia over on the left of the screen there. So we'll be live streaming that. Um, for the CE5, we'll be sharing tips on how to make contact and how to call in UFOs. And then if you guys would like, you can just watch the screen, what we have up, or you can also go outside and look in the sky yourself. I already know they're here right before I started. They're like, we're right, right above your house. <laughs> <laughs> so um, if you guys want, you can sit outside and look at the sky wherever you are. And we're just going to set the group intention together and then we'll also chat a bit. So how is everybody doing tonight? This is the first official C5 live stream. I used to do this on TikTok, but this is the first one on YouTube. So I'm super excited. <laughs> How's everybody doing? And hello, John Martin. Thank you so much for, for doing this. How are you doing? Hey, Lily, it's a pleasure to see you tonight. It's a beautiful night here in Atlanta, and I've set my intention and uh, have great hopes that our beautiful star family will come visit. Mm -hmm. I think we're yeah. going to have a lovely time. Yeah, definitely. So while, just right before we get started, let's go ahead right now and as a group together, and then we'll do kind of a short, we'll get quiet for a minute after we talk just for a little bit. Um to share kind of an introduction to CE5 and how John does it, how I do it. So let's go ahead right now and all set our intention to make group contact with our star family of the highest love and light. So you may just want to kind of like be quiet just for a second, set that intention, send out an invitation. And feel it in your heart also to make peaceful contact with our cosmic family of the highest love and light. Hey, Jane, I love how CE5 brings us together. I know, right? <laughs> Yeah, so since um, we, oh, good morning, Karen. So this works during the day and at night too. So you can do this at any time. And if you are watching the replay and you're not here live, you can still, uh, you know, go through the replay. This is beyond time and space. And you can listen to this and set the intention out um, if you're watching this later. So John, just to give a little bit of an introduction and then we'll pay attention to the uh, the stream, but we're keeping John's keeping an eye on it for us too, and we're and keep an eye on it if you see anything. Um, John, what are you pointed at right now in the sky? Um, this is Polaris. Uh, oftentimes, Lily, I'll um, have either constellation of intention or a star of intention, and the North Star Polaris um, is one that you know the entire sky rotates around Polaris, so that's a very central star and. Just last night, I was I was out here and it was very quiet. And when I was packing up, this beautiful golden energy appeared directly next to Polaris. And so it's it's a it's a very key star in many ways. So that I'm just I have the camera on it now, and uh, I'm sending that intention. That uh, Polaris is our uh, star of intention, beautiful ones. Feel free to fly by and look forward to seeing you tonight. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So uh, Katie asked where uh, John is located. You're located in, in Atlanta, Georgia, right? That's right. I live in Sandy Springs, just just north of Atlanta. And I'm at my little park. I live right next door. And I've been coming here for years and years. Um, summer, winter, fall, spring, it doesn't matter. Any clear night, I'm out here and I commune with with our star family and it's just been a really beautiful experience and i would encourage everyone to to really make it a regular practice 
uh, right. to do that. And you'll be amazed at how the universe just embraces your efforts. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, and I saw somebody in the chat ask, and we'll do a Q&A to hear throughout in a little bit later. Um, but CE5 is human initiated contact with extraterrestrials and UFOs. So that just means that you're sending out the invitation and, and they show up. So that's all that means. It's just kind of a quick way to say that. And if you guys want, um, those who are watching and joining this right now, you may want to grab some crystals. That helps with making contact as well. So I've got all of my crystals here. Um, crystals are actually very, very advanced technology, um, and you can use them for communication. So, yeah, just since we <laughs> since we decided to do this last night, I felt... Um, we did a quick test, John and I, and I was meditating right before that. And I saw all of these ships. So often there are ships already in the sky. <laughs> They're just often cloaked and, uh, in another dimension. So they'll kind of peek through pop. Sometimes they may pop in and out of our dimension. So you may see them just for a second. Um, but there's tons of ships already up there. They basically just uncloak themselves. Um, so I saw them last night and I just had such a peaceful night last night, felt them very strong and then felt them very strong uh, this morning as well and today right now, really. That's wonderful. Yeah. So they, they are really with us at all times. I speak to them, Billy, when I go outside just generally and I share, you know, all the important aspects of my life about challenges and and triumphs and, and my family and and we just have a very open uh, dialogue and the, to me that really helps them understand who I am as a person mm -hmm. and I think they appreciate that and that's that's really what they want to know from all of us is who we are what what drives us what what is uh, inspiring to us and uh, they they are so willing to meet us halfway when we do that yeah that's a great point um before i even really knew what was going on these ufos just started showing up and um there was one night i just looked up the sky and started talking to them i was like i don't know if you guys can hear me but you know why are you popping up all of a sudden what are you trying to tell me and to my surprise, I started receiving answers through signs and synchronicities, and then they would show up. So uh, just important thing to remember, you guys, we're all connected through consciousness. We're all one. And these beings are telepathic. So you can communicate with them in an instant. It doesn't matter where they are or where you are. Uh, they they can hear you. I'm just scanning the sky now to see mm -hmm. if, because oftentimes they will pop into our dimension. You'll see a bright flash, and then this beautiful energy will uh, materialize right in front of you. That the, there's um, there's one uh, particular one. I call them the beautiful two. They're two craft or two energies that fly together. Sometimes one is, is more prominent than the other. I just saw that a couple nights ago and, and they were literally just sitting in, yeah, in a static space mm -hmm. and just sending all this beautiful energy. Mm -hmm. and I have many videos. If you go to my YouTube, uh, I just, I think it's called, and I've got dozens of videos of that. They will fly through the um, constellation of intention. Like here is Cassiopeia. Oh, hey, hey, John. It sounds a little, the audio got a little messed up. Were you covering it or something? Oh, I may have been. Are we okay? Yeah, we're good now. Okay. And um, about 30 craft in a uh, chevron shape flew right through 
Cassiopeia. I think it's on that video I sent to you, at least. So um, they are amazing. They truly are. And they, they appreciate all the effort that we make mm -hmm. to contact. Yeah. Yeah, they want to make contact with us. And uh, somebody asked real quick, how do you know it's not a negative being uh, trying to trick? So I um, I never had like any experiences with that whenever I was doing CE5. But just to be on the, you want to just be specific that you're connecting with your star family of the highest love and light. But also you'll feel, they feel like love. They feel very high vibe. So that's how you, that's how, you know, whenever you make contact, you'll usually feel And John, maybe you can share how you feel, but you'll just suddenly like feel this love or this expanded awareness. It feels peaceful. It feels, it's just an amazing feeling. Do you have any comments that's, on that, John, how it feels? Exact, yeah, that's exactly right. It's a, it's a higher dimensional uh, energy that they're sending to you. The frequency is very high and refined. As a musician, you know, frequency is, is very important to uh, when I relate my own thoughts to the world through music. You know, I, I gravitate towards a certain uh, thought process and frequency and, and our star family are very well versed in that. And so when they send out their energies, it is just pure love and, and great beauty. And I've, I've never had any... Um, any other kind of experience except that. And when you send out your very best, you know, it, it's matched by the universe and that's sent back directly to you many times, many times over. So, yeah, I don't really, I'm not concerned about any of the negative aspect of what could happen. I, it's, you know, I've been doing it every night for 10 years now, every clear night and during the day and and it's only been just a beautiful experience. What what I did initially, <clears throat> Lily, is I had dinner with President Carter and we were talking about UFOs at one point and I used that and Close Encounters of the Third Kind where music was used as a communication tool and I put those ideas together and I went out on my deck and I started playing music with that specific thought in mind to connect with the universe. As soon as I did that, I think it was maybe the second or third session, I was walking my dog and I came back in to the neighborhood and directly over our home was a purple plasma craft with a pink ring around the bottom third of the bell sitting about 50 feet above our home. It was just absolutely amazing. And they it had this beautiful feminine energy to it. And it was just one of the most lovely things that I've ever seen. And it just slowly left about five miles an hour. And then a few weeks later, I continued the same idea of playing music that's important to me and sharing who I am with the universe. And then four craft, two sets of two, came over my courtyard. And then after that, the really big ones came. It was in the middle of the day they were in the shape of a cross and a crescent. They were at a 45 degree angle, burnished metal, size of office buildings. And they came directly over my home. And it was just absolutely amazing. And later I found out there's many crop circles that have that same cross and crescent shape. And uh, I was trying to take a picture of them. And in my mind, they said, please don't take our picture. We'll give you something you can take a picture of. And a few days later, I was going to see a movie with a friend of mine. And across the courtyard, I heard, hey, look over here. And there was a beautiful heart-shaped cloud that was given to me by our star family. And that they said they'd give me something I could take a photograph of. And I can't imagine a more beautiful gift. And that's on the cover of my book, actually, is that my very first, I call them aeroglyphs. They're just beautiful creations by our star family from a very high uh, dimensional source. That's amazing. Yeah, that was actually, and if there's anybody new here, um, so uh, John is live streaming the night sky and we're, you've, we've got some commentary. We went ahead and set out the intention to make contact with our benevolent star family of the highest love and light. So feel free to watch the live stream. 
um, to watch the screen here or feel free to go outside and, you know, just listen to this and look up at the sky and sky watch wherever you are. Um, yeah, that's amazing. That's, that's a good point. So everybody, you may, if you feel called, you can even close your eyes and see if you receive any information that way. Um, I definitely, I feel them here with us. And if you are open to receiving uh, downloads, light codes, you know, you can just set that intention and see if anything comes through your third eye. That happens to me a lot. So they can telepathically send you messages or you may see light um, or you may feel something. So feel free to do that as well. While we're all, you know, connected, just set the intention to connect and, um, and be open, focus, you know, open your heart. Um, but I wanted to say also, keep an eye out for what happens after this. So even if you don't see something like on this stream, they're there and you can ask them for a sign at your home, wherever you are. And it may come just like John was explaining the next day, a few days later, they may give you some sort of a sign. Um, they, they give me and John clouds a lot, heart clouds. And so I've even seen their faces in the clouds. So that's a great way that they may communicate. Yeah, they've made many um, really um, very distinct um, aeroglyphs of yeah, how they actually look. I mean, there's very distinctive facial features. There was one it was uh, kind of a cameo of a face looking straight up and it's most uh, most of them are right here at the park uh, in my book i've got a number of them that i've printed and they were telling me that was me looking up at them and so they you know they have very great meaning and very deep thought goes into each of these creations that they make they made a perfect star shaped cloud for me uh, which was really amazing. Um, and Lily, in my book, I decided to, in the ebook, there's hyperlinks, so you can just touch it when you read the book, and it takes you to my YouTube channel and all the many of my um, interviews, including our interview, of course. And then in the book itself, if you, I'm getting that uh, nearly ready to print, they're QR codes. So when you're reading, you can take your phone and just, look at the QR code and it'll take you to the same location. So it's going to be a very interactive book and I, I, I'll send you a copy. I hope you like it. Yeah, I'm super excited for it. That's amazing. So John just finished a book on, uh, and congrats, by the way, a book on how Thank to you. make, how to make contact in, in his experiences. Uh, somebody asked, can you feel tingles on your crown too? That is a great sign that you are receiving frequencies, uh, downloads from our star family. If you feel a tingling on the top of your head. <laughs> Absolutely. A lot of times, a lot of the oh, uh -oh. Okay. The this, this is just an airplane, but oftentimes it will be around craft. So sometimes I'll, follow a craft and then they'll they'll be very close by and that's kind of a signal that they're here and i'm not seeing much at this point so anyway i'm ever hopeful yeah yeah definitely um i've actually recorded a plane go by it was a tr3b actually like the black triangle and whenever oh, yeah. i yeah those aren't officially supposed to exist <laughs> they're like mm -hmm. a secret top secret um, government. Um, I recorded one passing over, flew over my house. And whenever I looked at the footage and I boosted the brightness up, there were five orbs of light that went around it and passed it in the video. Wow. That is incredible. I love yeah. that. Yeah. It was pretty wild. So this, this would be a good time to uh, maybe talk about that. So, you, you're not always going to see them with your eyes. Um, they're all around sometimes. Uh, well, how, how do they kind of show up for you? So you may see, and if any of you are sitting at home, sitting outside, like looking up at the sky right now, sometimes they'll show you a flash or a sparkle. Does that ever happen to you, John? Yeah, absolutely. They, I, I had one um, 
there was a flash. This was early on. I need to locate that video. And I, I put the camera right on the spot, and you could see it accelerate directly away from me as fast as you can possibly imagine. So they'll come in and flash and, and, and disappear. That's one category of, of the uh, energies that, that do come. Some are fully illuminated for the full flight path from one horizon to the other. Others will kind of phase out of our, uh, of our dimension. Others, there's two or three different kinds that will be around each other. Um, you know, many of them interact with each other. Um, I've had winged craft that came in. I was, this is on the video again, and I was saying, I'm just filming randomly, but it's never random, is it, dear friends? And this winged craft came directly into the field of view. It went to a star and stopped and took a left and did aerobatics. Mm -hmm. Uh, way beyond the ability of uh, anything I've ever seen. My, my dad was an aeronautical engineer, so I'm very um, aware of all the different kind of conventional craft, but th this was something very different. And they've come back many, many times, and, and they will fly at many, many hundreds of miles an hour, way above speed of sound and there's never any sonic booms or anything like that so it's a it's a te technology that's well beyond uh what we are familiar with mm -hmm. yeah and somebody in the chat asked um about an orange seeing an orange an object light up in orange and then morph into a plane so i have heard that they can morph uh into other craft too or make it appear like they are. I've heard. I've never seen them morph into a plane. I mean, it could have. It could happen. I'm just. I w haven't been aware of. Mm -hmm. Of them doing that, but you know, I would not be surprised that that's another. Very strong, ability that they have. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the flashes, um, sparkles. Uh, power-ups. So I saw my first power-up whenever me and Katie went to Mount Shasta in July. A craft came over and then it suddenly just got really big and the energy expanded and it did it twice for us and then went back down. That was pretty wild. <laughs> that is great. Yeah. On the uh, Another thing on the video, this was not that long ago in my courtyard. I was just walking my dog and these golden energies were not much more than treetop level. There were numbers of them. There was, I think there were four of them. And they made a point to fly between me and the planes that were flying above them. So you could tell that they were much closer than the planes that were flying by. And so they do that kind of thing to validate who they are as well. Mm -hmm. Which I think is very, you know, very kind and benevolent of them to do that. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Hmm. So they were uh, just telling me, even just watching, like looking at the screen right now or sitting wherever you're at right now, they're sending us frequencies. Mm-hmm. saw a bird Stacy saw a bird like craft fly by and it kind of stopped it was shiny silvery white wow yeah one consideration for tonight lily is the, the moon is about two-thirds full and it's almost directly overhead and if you can imagine the amount of photons that are reflected from the sun and pouring down on us from that you tell me it's harder for them to to be able to recognize my signal coming out. So tonight's a little bit more of a challenge than normal, because mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of light pollution here mm -hmm. tonight. But uh, I'm still looking. It's been very quiet so far, though. This was like it was last night. I waited, you know, for over an hour, and then when I was packing up, that's when the golden energy appeared mm -hmm. right at Polaris. So that's still my star of intention for tonight. And let's see if uh, we have any 
activity there. You know what I do? It, I've kind of got a lot going here to, to be able to <clears throat> live stream with you tonight, but I have a drone. And what I do is I'll put the drone next to the star of attention, intention, which would be Polaris. And they will come in, Lily, and they will fly um, between my drone and the star of intention. I've got a few videos of that. I've got another one where they were way over Atlanta and it came all the way here. It took about 15 minutes in the video for it to come all the way over and flew directly over the top of my drone, which was really an amazing thing. So I have a number of videos like that on, on my YouTube awesome. channel. Awesome. Yeah. And I, their abilities. Yeah. And I put um, John's YouTube channel in the video description too. And, and at the end of the live, I'm going to play some of his UFO footage. So John's been on, you've been on some TV shows as well, right? Some of your footage. Yeah, I was on uh, Paranormal Caught on Camera. And I've been contracted to be on The Proof is Out There, but they have yet to show show my stuff. So I'm still waiting on that one. Mm -hmm. But you've been mm -hmm. on too, haven't you, Lily? Yeah, Paranormal Caught on Camera. Very nice. Yeah. They're um, a great bunch of they're a great bunch of folks over there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hey, beautiful eyes. Can you send a big, lovely ship for us tonight? So love to see you, dear ones. And I, I always talk with them, Lily. I, you mm -hmm. know, I, I think the thoughts also what I'll do is, you know, I'm a musician. And so what I, um, what I do is I perform my own music. Um, I play, perform music from all in many styles, many, uh, from over the centuries, from Baroque to mm -hmm. classical to Renaissance, jazz and Brazilian and original music. And so I play that on my deck and I project in, in that way that I was saying, just sending positive thought and love and wrapping it around the music and sending it deep into, into space. And that, that is a quantum level of, act, of activity that you're doing. So time and space don't really apply and it will go deep and through throughout the universe and then through all the dimensions. And that's when the craft really started coming in. So when I'm here in the park, I do the same thing, but I just use my mind to play these same pieces and it has the same effect. Awesome. And, and so I, so I sit here and I just, I'll announce like it's a Bach Courant. And so I'll, I visualize myself sitting in a position to play and I tune my strings and and I sit in that position and start playing the piece from beginning to end in my mind and they recognize that too. And so what we all have something that we've dedicated many years of our lives to master and it's different for everybody. And so use what, what you have done and recognize that you have that agency to be able to share who you are with the universe. And that's when really wonderful interactions will occur. Yeah, that's amazing. Um, my camera just turned off, so I'm going to return. I'm going to turn that back on. Um, if you want to just kind of like talk with them for a minute or everybody just kind of maybe everybody can send a message to them, just kind of send talk telepathically to them right now and we'll just go quiet for a second. John, you can talk if you'd like to kind of share your process or okay. however you guys want to do it. I'll be right back. So I um, I used to sit in my courtyard and, and the craft would come in. Um, after actually what I'll say is after the cross and crescent came, there was a long period of time where I didn't see anything. And I thought that uh, maybe they just realized I wasn't worth all the trouble, but what they were really doing is allowing me time to integrate that experience. And I'd be sitting in my uh, courtyard and I were just walking my dog in around, around our home. And these lights started flying overhead and I really didn't pay a lot of attention to it. And then they started flashing at me. So I, I got a 
Adirondack chair and I set it up in my courtyard. And then the two, that's when the two started coming and uh, they flew by and then they flew back and disappeared in a cloud and never came out. The following night they did it again and the two, the two uh, flew from east to west to my left and then one of them peeled off in front of me and I just felt like waving to it. And when I waved to it, it just expanded in brightness many times and I waved again and it did it again. And I waved a third time and it did it, it, it did it again for the third time. So I knew it was them. And uh, we live in kind of a tight area and there's a number of homes and families. And I just felt, you know, it would be more, uh, more polite really to, sh to share with the star family and in, in the quiet place where I can really concentrate and not have to be imposing on my neighbors. So there's this little neighborhood park right next door and I'm here at my picnic table and almost all the videos on my YouTube channel are me sitting at the same spot. And we, there's like a bowl of sky around me and it's, it's the tapestry uh, that they use. It's the palette that uh, they create all these beautiful experiences. And there, there are times when, when they're not here, and I, you know, they tell me they have many other obligations around the universe, and I, I understand that. And so there, there's times when, when I don't have any uh, interactions, but that's okay. I mean, uh, you just enjoy the night sky, and you know that you're sending out an intention, and it will be matched. And it may not be this particular time, but uh, it will. They will. They recognize the effort and they appreciate all all the work you put into it. And mm -hmm. I think if we all can do that, you know, we can make a very important quantum change on the on the earth. And and that's why I've dedicated so much time to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. I used to go out and. Um do CE5 every single day. At first it was at night and then I switched over to sunset and I had a lot of, um, most of my footage or at least half of it is actually from probably most of it is during the day. Um, and during the day they can come in different ways. Uh, if you film near the sun, you can see they'll show up as like golden orbs of light that you can only see in this certain like light spectrum that our eyes may not even be able to pick up, but the camera can pick it up. Um, and yeah, I used to just go to this, this park, this lakeside park and make contact with them. And if you put, if you put the effort in, especially if you really put time and effort into it, um, they're going to show their appreciation and, and, and something's going to happen. <laughs> it's true. It's absolutely true. <laughs> yeah. Um, somebody had asked a minute ago, I want to answer the question. Um, I don't know, Andromeda, if I've encountered any ETs from Aldebaran. I know Aldebaran, um, but I'm not sure on that one. I've seen many, many different types of ETs, though. Um, earlier while I was meditating, I saw Pleiadians and Arcturians. Um, and somebody else asked... Stacy asks, what kind of telescope or binoculars or other gear can you recommend? So you can just get a kind of a normal pair of binoculars. Uh, you can probably find some on Amazon. Um, so binoculars are great. I don't have a telescope. Um, do you have a, do you use a telescope or you just use your camera, right, John? I have a telescope, but that's, yeah, it's really not, uh, it doesn't really work for things that move in near field at you know at high speed it's more for you know constellations and stars and mm -hmm. and that sort of thing so yeah um but i use the uh psionics aurora i've used that one for years i've got uh the luna optics i don't use that as much but it's kind of a standby secondary camera these are all night vision cameras mm -hmm. and i've got um the Sony A7S 3 that's what I'm filming with now, and it's interchangeable with zoom lenses. And so this one is, is really um, 
they're very versatile and uh, it goes 4k and you can do 8k with it and i've gotten some really high definition videos of multiple crafts that have flown in and um crafts that are barely in this dimension that are that display um characteristics that are not of this realm and i've had a number of those that i've been able to to uh chronicle just with this camera mm -hmm. so there's a lot of a lot of uh good equipment and it's not terribly expensive the sony is pretty expensive but the others are a few hundred dollars if you get them on ebay or mm -hmm. um that kind of thing and, and the psionics too i found a guy that um he does airsoft and so he he rigged it up with an external battery and a 3x magnifier and the battery ties it all together and you can really zoom in very well with with that uh, I've got that link in my book too. So uh, I, I give a lot of uh, advice on how to film and how to record it and how to archive it in your um, <clears throat> on your computer so that you can access it later. And and so there, it's a whole process to to really um, chronicle your work. And uh, I think that's an important aspect of it. <laughs> yeah. I've got Real hard fun. hard drives full. <laughs> I do too. <laughs> uh, walking and walking lightly asks, is there a way to be 100% certain you are communicating with them? I stopped trying because there were too many people in between. What do you have to say about that, John? Well, I, you know, it's, it's there's a subtlety that is all part of it and so um you have to recognize that it's not it's not going to be an overt act you know they they use great discretion when when they communicate with you and you know it, oftentimes it will seem like it's almost your own voice saying these things but it's um it like one time i had a flash a very fast flash and in the flash itself it said our optics are a million times more advanced than yours are. Wow. And so I knew that was them saying that, but it was very quick and it was kind of in my voice. And so when you, when you do have communication with another realm, it's, it's on their terms and you have to, you have to uh, accept that it's, you know, it's, it's something that you really have to uh, tune in on. And that's a, another frequency issue that, once you tie it into that frequency, then you can you can discern it a lot easier that way. Mm -hmm. Great answer. Yeah, um, focusing on developing your intuition helped me a lot. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. The the moon is so bright tonight. Unfortunately, that's gonna. An issue. I'm still looking. I have not seen a single thing. Really, it's just been very, very, very quiet. Wow. And we'll probably have to do this again on a new moon whenever there's less light pollution. Maybe we can do it during the day, too. That's a great idea. That's a great idea, because when they when they do show up, um, it goes from a static sky to a completely alive event. The entire sky seems to be awake and alive, and now it's you know it's really just you know these ancient stars that we're looking at. So and I have I've had nights like this, and and it's okay. Uh, I wish they would come to, to visit us today, but, you know, that's, that's not my call. That's okay. Either way, I feel we are helping each other to tune into the frequency of it and setting the intention. So that's why I was saying keep an eye out after this mm -hmm. because you may you can ask for some sort of a sign because they, they get your intention in, in your messages if you send them. Just talk to them, 
telepathically with that intention and ask for them to show you a sign. They may, they may show up as you're going to sleep. You may see something in the sky. You yeah. may see something the next day. Well, that was, that was the thing last night. I was putting all my equipment away and then I looked at Polaris and then that beautiful energy just came into our dimension and it was amazingly beautiful. Mm -hmm. And I was able to get it on my psionics as it was there. And then it's, then it just pulled out of our dimension. So I was able to capture the last portion of it, but that was all I saw last night. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, the, the moon makes it a challenge. It really does. And they've told me that before that there's so many photons being flooded on us, you know, because you, you know, that's an entire celestial body that has, you know, the solar photons that are bouncing off of it. So that's, mm -hmm. that's kind of the challenge for tonight. It's mm -hmm. a beautiful night though. Yeah, it is. Um, so maybe let's go ahead and just say, say a prayer. They're nudging me to say a prayer. Oh, that's great. Prayers are amazing because the, the universe is listening always. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> always. So let's everybody just kind of take a second. You can close your eyes if you'd like. And, you know, I do guided meditations and activations. So this is kind of my jam, but we'll just do kind of a quick prayer. So if you want to go ahead and take, uh, and we'll tune in too. Go ahead and take a few deep breaths in. And yeah, as you breathe in, you may want to breathe light into your body. This helps raise your frequency and slow your mind. Breathing in light. Nice and slow and then exhale. And we are together tonight with the intention to connect with our loving star family in the higher realms and we ask for some sort of a sign and we ask for assistance from our guides of the highest love and light on our journey. Assistance in raising our frequency. And go ahead and focus on your heart for a moment. And feel your heart just filling with love and light. Feel your heart expanding. Your heart is the key to connection and communication with the higher realms. So we fill our hearts with love and light. And we also send thanks and gratitude Focusing on what we are grateful for. We send our love to our cosmic family and thank them for assisting us on our journey and for showing up, for guiding us and helping Earth. We send our love and gratitude to the divine. And state that we are open to receiving love and light, healing and downloads from the universe to assist us on our journey. Open to receive the love and light of the universe because we also have to be open to receive. And part of that is by opening your heart 
open body, open mind. That was kind of a prayer, but, <laughs> and if you have any specific messages that you would like to send to your star family or send to um, these benevolent beings, go ahead and, and just share a dialogue telepathically. You can say it out loud if you'd like, but just to make it personal. Lady Red Wolf says, they told me to bring in light, put one hand on the heart and the other above the head pointing inward or upward, pointing upward. So, yeah, you can just kind of tune in and see if you receive any messages. It may be a feeling. You may get an image, your intuition. Anna's feet are tingly. <laughs> Kat says she feels them. Yeah. And you can also ask for a sign in your dreams tonight. So it's it's very it's much seems to be much easier for them to communicate and send us messages and interact while we're in the dream state. Um, you can ask to see your star family in your dreams tonight, set that intention before bed or to receive some sort of a message tonight, set that intention before bed, see what happens. Um, the night that I did that, the first time I tried that out, I saw a, a UFO. I was having a normal dream just playing out, and then suddenly a UFO yeah. flew over to me in the dream, and it was just kind of like hovering there for a minute, yeah. and was like, hi, mm -hmm. and then it left, and then it was pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Karen. Beautiful prayer. Tabitha, they pretty much always show up for me in a vision, a thought. When I'm not picking up on them, it pretty much always has something to do with me rather than them. That's a good point. So, um, very it, good point. yeah. So it's very frequency based. Um, apparently, they can always hear you, but we can't always hear them. We need to get in a high enough frequency in the right kind of like mental space. And you can do that by focusing on your heart instead, less on the mind, more on the heart and feeling. And um, and yeah, so even if they don't show up physically. Um, so for me, they, they were showing up physically a lot in the beginning. And then as I started working with my intuition and, and psychic abilities and meditation, now they don't show up as craft as much for me anymore. It's more of like, um, it's more of a feeling and a, and a telepathic uh, communication. So yeah, that's a good point. Um, you can usually always pick up on them if you're in the right state. <laughs> Thank you, Gina. Yeah, I've heard a lot of people say that they fall asleep to my activations and then wake up right at the end. <laughs> So you're doing stuff in the astral, typically. Hi, Mary. <laughs> uh, Angel saw mantis beings this morning. Then we were walking tonight, and I saw a praying mantis. 
Yeah, so they can they can manipulate this reality because everything's happening all at once anyways, the past, present, and future. So they can like they can manipulate the clouds. Um, you can have a dream of a praying mantis and then see a praying mantis. And that's that's their way, part of their way of communicating with you. It's pretty interesting. It's pretty mind blowing. Hi, Flask. Yeah, so let's see. Maybe let's set the intention tonight and ask if we can go up on the ship tonight. And then just see what happens. <laughs> okay. And often what I found uh, whenever I was going out and doing CE5 each day, um, whenever I would, it doesn't always happen whenever you're like wanting it to happen or looking for it. A lot of the time they will just surprise you whenever you're not looking for it. Did That's you... very true. That's <laughs> absolutely right. <laughs> <laughs> and I've had, I've had stretches where there'd be two or three weeks and I won't see anything. And then it'll just, you know, and I think there's um, there's some kind of um, challenge that they have personally that they're not able to connect. Uh, oftentimes, um, when they first start coming back in after these long periods, they'll be very short. Um, you know, there'll be a flash. And then the second day, they'll be able to maintain within this dimension a lot easier for them so they i think there's challenges for them to come into this into this third dimension as well so right. I, I think that's that's part of the mm -hmm. the challenge of this definitely yeah yep 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 yeah i've i think the last um oh i'm gonna hit record on my camera again um the last time i saw i saw two ships and this was the first time seeing two, and it was in broad daylight behind my house in the suburbs. And they started rotating around each other. It was incredible. And it lasted for like a minute or two. I, I got a little bit of it on camera. But um, that was a big gift. Um, they told me to go outside that day. I wasn't practicing C5 as much. Um I used to go out every day with my camera. Now it's more of like a feeling and, and telepathic communication. And, and I, and I connect with them through meditation and stuff. Um, but they told me I had just like gone through something really rough the night before. And um, that morning I got a telepathic message and they said, I'm sorry. They were sorry for what happened to me. And um, they told me to mm -hmm. go outside and, and do CE5 that day. And that was my first time doing it in months. I went outside and, um, and whenever I just, at first I was like looking for them and then I just started to relax and I just started talking to them and sharing my experiences with them and kind of like looking back on, <laughs> I almost want to get like choked up, looking back on some of the beautiful memories and I just kind of like stopped focusing on the sky and stopped focusing on getting getting them on camera. And then while I was in the middle of this, just sharing and so in the emotion and the feeling, then these two ships showed up in broad daylight. And wow. I like, yeah, it was amazing. <laughs> that happens here in the park. I was just walking and there was this energy that went um, it was very low and it just traversed. And so I pulled my my phone out, and then behind it were two more that were kind of dancing around each other. And they were just, um, so there were three of them in a, a straight line. And that was one of the videos that they, they chose for the um, paranormal caught on camera because it was, it was truly amazing how they do that. And, and it's the energy that they send even as they're, you know, receding from you is still so strong and, mm -hmm. and powerful. And it's, it's such a beautiful experience. It really is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Yeah. But yeah, that's one of the other things when um, I ask them why they don't show up as much physically anymore. Well, they're like, you're, we kind of like, we don't need to, uh, but also they, it, it is, it can be hard on them. I, I think because they have to lower their frequency and, and the, the 3d can be um, difficult. And plus I do think that they may have restrictions on how much they can be seen in public. I think that's true. I do too. Yeah. Yeah. So sometimes you may see something and you may be the only one who sees it. Like it can, it can be frequency specific. I've seen something whenever I was with somebody and they didn't see it. And then it went vice versa. I asked them to show my brother because he didn't believe me at the time. I asked them, we were both outside stargazing and I asked them to show him something. And he saw five shooting stars within like 10 seconds. And, um, they kind of like winked at me like they were, sh but I didn't see them. We were both looking up at the sky and you don't see five shooting stars in 10 seconds. That doesn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> they had a little outside concert over here, just at the end of the street. Uh, it's kind of the city center and a beautiful energy went directly over the audience and maybe two or three people looked at it and it was just magnificent. Wow. And, so, yeah, I think a lot, oftentimes when people aren't ready for that, they, they shun that, that, that frequency and they're, they're not prepared for it. So that's another aspect of it is it's, it takes a, a lot of discipline and time and energy to, to be able to acknowledge and absorb the experience and, and to be able to, re, you know, react in, in a positive way as opposed to, uh, ignoring it or uh, just not giving it the, uh, the the correct acknowledgement. So that's that's mm -hmm. all part of, of this experience to learn how to do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And sometimes you may see something out of the corner of your eye and you're like, did I just see something? But you can't really tell. They do that a lot too. So keeping in mind that sometimes it can be difficult for them to lower their frequency. So they may just just do something really short and sweet um, where it's like, D did I just see that? And then you'll start to learn how to like trust your intuition and realize that it is them. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Um, somebody also asked, I think Leah, a big owl in the tree above me. So they, this sounds weird, but they used to communicate with me through the owls. Oh, like, yeah. They can connect with even like animals, like seeing the praying mantis on your walk. So every time an owl would hoot, they would be telling me I, I knew to pay attention and tune in because they had a message for me and they were saying that they were there. So usually it meant it, it started to mean to open my crown chakra to so I would stop whatever I'm doing. And for like 20 seconds, I would focus on opening my crown so that they could send downloads and connect with me that way. Your crown chakra is like plugging you in to the universe, to the divine, to the higher realms. So I would open my crown and, and they would send. Suddenly I would start to see all of this light, like downloads um, and, and light codes and frequencies would start entering in. Pretty mind-blowing, but they would communicate through the owls. Um, it was wild, mind-blowing. Um, I've but, seen many owls as well, and mine are uh, more the hawks. We have red tails and Cooper's hawks, and whenever the metallic craft come in, the hawks are always right there. And in the aeroglyphs, that uh, I've got a number of them in my book also. And when they show up, they recognize that frequency, and they're very often very close to the cloud formations that are created. And so the hawks as well, I've had many with the owls. I've got videos with owls that, that are flying through when these golden energies are here. But the hawks are really tuned into it because they're soaring all day long and they see these uh, beautiful energies way more than we do. And so I think they are as connected to our star family as, as, as we are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, the hawks too. Um, I just lost what I was going to say. 
Um, so yeah, sometimes ETs and UFOs they show up. Um, there's a thing where like owls will show up, or um, in deer. Sometimes it happens with deer too. Yeah. And hawks. Oh, I was gonna say I had a really interesting experience um, last summer with an avian, a blue avian, so a bird, extraterrestrial bird being, and. Yeah. It was wild. Like I went for a walk and this hawk literally almost landed on my head. I was at my mom's house and she was like, oh my God, I've never seen a hawk do that. It like swooped down and almost landed on my head. And then I kept feeling that they were like, like intense energies, like they were communicating with me. And then whenever I got back from my walk, I meditated and I had this blue avian uh, that just, it I had an amazing experience with it where I felt my consciousness expanding and I felt like sacred geometry of light expanding from my body. It was really wild. But so that was a time when they kind of like they used a hawk to get my attention. That That is amazing. It's truly amazing. Yeah. Greetings. I had a right here where I'm sitting. There's an opening. I'll show you where it on the camera here. This opening right here. It was the day after Easter 2019 during the day. And I was walking my dog uh, just next to here. And this portal opened and this being came through it barely in our dimension and i was able to get about five pictures of it <clears throat> wow and i um i looked away because it was clearly from another higher realm and so uh, i questioned why i looked away from it and that night i came back and right at the treetop level a golden energy came down and I apologized. I said, I'm really sorry I didn't give that entity the time it deserved. And then that golden energy expanded many, many times, understanding that it's a challenge for us to, you know, to see and interact things that, with uh, energies and beings that are well beyond this realm. So that was a great lesson for me. That's awesome. That's amazing. And they won't give you more than what you're ready for, too. They may push the envelope a little bit, but for the most part. So I always tell people, like, if you set the intention to connect with them, don't think that you're going to wake up in the middle of the night and there's going to be extraterrestrials in the room. That most likely won't happen. <laughs> right. Yeah. I've, I've, they're, they're very, um, I have interactions all out through, you know, whenever I'm outside. I've had a few things inside. Um, as well but for the mo for the most part you know they're very civil and and uh, understanding that yeah that they, they treat me with great respect and i treat them with great respect as well and, and that's reflected in every interaction that i've had with them mm -hmm. yeah yeah and somebody mentioned ear ringing so that's actually a good way that i was able to tell whenever they were around is my ears would start ringing so that you're getting hit with these like different frequencies. So your ears might ring. Um, so that's a good way to know as well. Um, yeah, this has been one of the quietest nights I've had in a long time. <laughs> Well, and we'll wrap it up in, in just a second, but let's everybody kind of keep your, your eyes out or just feeling yeah. after this. Um, I know they are definitely aware that we are doing this right now. And some people in the chat were already connecting with them and could feel them or feel tingles on their body. Um, and also, right. yeah, so just kind of keep an eye out after this. You may want like tune in before bed or if you want to go outside and kind of just have your own. Sometimes it can be hard with a group, but sometimes it can be really powerful with a group. So it can kind of go uh, both ways, but just, you know, kind of like sit with yourself for a minute and talk to them or whatever after this. 
to um to just to tune in and check in. And I also wanted to share so there yeah. can be beings on the ground around you in another dimension that you cannot see. I've caught one of them on camera that was right in front of me with my iPhone. It was this mm. like light being and it was right in front of me, but I couldn't see with my eyes, but I could feel. So there can be all sorts of stuff going on around us that we just can't even see. Uh, Dr. Sh Stephen Greer has also caught some photos of um, of beings on the ground that you didn't see them with your eyes, but the camera picks them up because the camera can pick up more of the light spectrum. So that can happen. Also, I've had them in my bedroom where I felt them around and I could feel them. They were doing energy work on me. This is probably one of the most extreme experiences I had. I could feel them going up and down my arm and on the side of my face, but I couldn't see them and I could feel them. So that's wow. just something. That, yeah, <laughs> that was wild. That's amazing. That is that, wild. That was the inner earth beings. So Three deer. I saw three deer um, the other night whenever I went camping. As soon as I pulled up to my camping spot, that's definitely a sign. So you could look that up too. The different uh, signs and synchronicities. I saw three doe yesterday at the little park I go to, and one was stamping her hoof, which was really cool. Awesome. Awesome. And another time, I, a mother doe was feeding her fawn and so i got a video of her doing that which was really really something i've never seen that before mm. in real wow. life that's amazing well i guess we'll go ahead and start wrapping it up um and we'll i think i think it would be a great idea to do this on another night where it's a new moon and there's less light pollution let's please do that that would be great yeah i look forward to it yeah. And maybe I can stream. I may be able to stream with the night vision camera too, but I kind of like this setup too. Yeah, this is great. Yeah. Um, does anybody have any questions for me or John before we wrap it up? And <laughs> Laura, you're coming right at the end. Um, and does anybody, and if anybody's just tuning in now, you can definitely start from the beginning so we basically were just setting the intention. We were connecting with them through this. So you can watch the screen or you can go sit outside and kind of like do your own thing while listening to this. Um, but do you have anything that you'd like to share or add, John? Well, I just thank everyone for being with us tonight. And, and I'm so impressed with Lily's really deep work on in this realm I've, I've been so impressed with her for a very long time and she's a great inspiration to me and i'm mm -hmm. just very thankful that, that uh that we're colleagues and friends and we work together and and it's important work and it needs it really needs to be shared with the world and, and i thank all of y'all for being with us tonight yeah Thank you, John. It has been amazing to meet you. You actually, you taught me a lot. Um, you know, I didn't know, I didn't even know about like CE5 or anything whenever this started happening to me and, and you were out basically doing the same thing every night. So that was very helpful on my journey as well. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I recognized immediately what you were doing as whoa, that's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> and the signs in the clouds and everything. I remember I got a smiley face and you commented. You're like, that was that was for you. And I was like, wait, what? They're communicating with me through the cloud. They, that, they, I remember that very, very <laughs> clearly. That was absolutely created for you. That was that was yours personally. They do that for me, too. And they'll do it for anyone. Uh, when you set an intention and you put in the time and effort and really want to connect they will do absolutely wonderful wonderful uh creations and interactions and uh it's just a, a lovely experience i think yeah 
And John's voice. Somebody says, Stacy, you sound so easygoing. Great energy. So just listening to John's voice and during his uh, is just activating in itself. Like you just automatically feel that love, feel very, very relaxed, at ease. It makes it super easy to connect with them. And in some of his um, videos, the way that you talk to Star Family, it's just inspiring. And it really is great for helping to connect, I feel like. Well, I really appreciate that. That uh, you know, they they endear that sort of frequency, and so when you integrate that yourself, then it reflects back to them and and to the world, and and that's how we can really evolve and and ascend into a more loving and uh, just world. And mm -hmm. it's a gr it's a great uh, effort. I mean, it's an important effort, and. I'm glad you, uh, you've you dedicated so much of your life to that, Lily, and, and I'm grateful that you're my very dear friend. Mm -hmm. Right back at you. Um, Bod C asked, are some of them just their version of drones? I could see that. Some of the orbs um, or some of the um, physical ships. I've seen balls of light that I believe they're somehow projecting their consciousness. Uh, through the light, through an orb, but I'm sure they probably have some ships that are that may not even be manned. They're more of like a drone type deal. So I could see that. Um, let me see if there were any other questions before we wrap it up. All right, awesome. Thank you guys so much. And uh, contact contact is here. It's on a very personal, individual level, so everybody can make contact and make contact and connect with their star family and these benevolent beings. It's happening more and more as we are raising our frequency and they're starting to show up more and more and, and becoming more and more involved. So, um, so it's just a great time to be doing group CE fives like this and be doing meditations and setting the intention. And if you want to go outside at night and spend 10 minutes looking up, talking to them uh, and develop a relationship with them, that will, you're going to get some sort of a response. Um, Definitely. And it's the most amazing feeling. So thank you guys so much for being here tonight. Um, I guess I'll go ahead and uh, I'll share all whenever I end. Well, before I end the stream, I'll share a video from John Martin. If anybody wants to hang tight and watch this uh, video of some of his uh, sightings. Awesome. Thank you guys. All right, John. You enjoyed Lily, the rest thank of your night. Yeah. You too. It's such a great pleasure. Thank you for having me. Yeah. We'll talk to you soon. All right. Take care. Okay. Bye bye. Uh huh. Okay, guys, I'm going to go ahead and share this and then the video will be over. If you're here right now, please don't forget to like this video and leave a comment um, and let me know how you guys. Think, I think I'll uh, do an episode where I share more of my U UFO footage. I haven't done that in a while. Even the the um, the frequencies from the footage are very activating and can help you connect with them too. So if you hang tight and want to look at John's footage, keep that in mind. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and exit him out. Okay, keep that in mind that uh, it's helping you connect with their frequencies just looking at this footage. All right, everybody. You enjoy the rest of your night, and I will see you Sunday. All right, sharing the screen. Okay. Oh, and I also have some links in the d video description, um, a couple videos, how to make contact, uh, how to photograph the spiritual world.
spectacular. That's not random, this is what works. Wow. Only that's not the greatest thing you've ever seen. Wow, friends. Hey, my friend. Hey, beautiful one. Oh, my gorgeous friend. You are so awesome. So great to see you. That's me, friend. Hey, how are you, brother? Oh, how wonderfully done you could be a sister as well. Love you. That's perfect. Thank you so much. Awesomely done. You are so cool. You are so incredible. How wonderful time, beautiful one. How absolutely incredible you are. You are just absolutely fantastic. Thank you for that. Oh, nice turn. Hey. Hey. Can you guys see that? <laughs> I want to make sure that you guys can see that before I keep going. Okay. <laughs> you are always a part of this, aren't you, dear one? You are magnificent, just like all of other beautiful friends. How gorgeous. Forgive me for steering away, dear friend. I have to look at my dear friend here. Can you turn? Yes, you can. Wow. You are super moving. Can you turn again? Yes. Wow. Oh, there's my friends. Oh, there's two. Oh, how gorgeous. Wow. So awesome, friends. Beautifully done. Wow. That was great. Thank you, sweet friends. You're so awesome. There you are. Hey, beautiful, lovely friends. You're so wonderful and amazing, dear ones. Much love to you always. Hey. So well done. Thank you, sweet friends. So much love to you, dear ones. Thank you. Beautiful done. Thank you, dear friend. Hey, beautiful one. Hey, sweet friend. You're so awesome. Absolutely great. Hey, sweet Brad. So amazing. Whoa, y'all are doing it together. Whoa, I'm going to follow this one. <laughs> that was so amazing. Thank you, beautiful wife. Absolutely great. Beautifully done. Thank you. Gorgeous. Definitely done, friends. Thank you. Hey, my friend. Hey, lovely one. So good. To see. Oh, you went this way, too. How wonderful. Wonderfully done, friends. Thank you. Gorgeous. Just absolutely amazing. Look at that. Thank you, gorgeous ones. My gracious. You're really doing it tonight. Thank you. That is the most amazing thing ever. Thank you, lovely ones.
Thank you. It's so, it's so beautiful. You remind me of the many nights I've spent with my daughter out speaking to the stars and they respond straight away because they can feel the heart of the child, the, the cosmic child in each one of us. So a real great blessing to sit in your music and also feel the, the wonders of how the cosmos responds. I really feel it. And, and I can Thank feel you. your frequency out there and, and you are aligned beautifully with with the universe and that's that's what happens is you it, you're just naturally aligned with something that's um so inspiring and so beautiful and so important and mm -hmm. so loving and giving and it's it's so amazing really Okay, everybody, isn't his commentary amazing? Just listening to his footage and watching his footage is very, very relaxing. Um, uh, somebody asks, is this Stephen Greer C5 contact method? Not necessarily, no. This is our, me and John have our own ways of doing it, but some of the principles are the same. And you can also look into uh, Dr. Greer's C5. We just call it that because it's, faster to say than making contact with UFOs and extraterrestrials. <laughs> okay, everybody, thank you guys for being here and joining. Um, <laughs> and like I said, even seeing that footage is doing something to you, activating you. So um, I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your evening. And I hope to see you on Sunday for the live activation at 2 p.m. Central Time, or you can catch the replay later. Sunday, we're doing a Meet Your Star Family. So we'll be connecting with these different beings and see what happens. An orb went across my face. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, I uh, was recording myself on my camera to see if we caught any orbs. <laughs> All right, everybody, enjoy the rest of your evening. I love you guys. Take care. <laughs>